The game Flappy Bird is perhaps one of the most famous mobile games that was ever created for Android and for iOS. Now, what I think is really amazing about the game is that it's become so famous even though it is so simple to build. So in this video, we're going to be building this game from start to finish in Python and Pygame. To make it really easy to understand, I'm going to be breaking down the process of building the game into a couple of simple steps. We're going to start off by creating the scrolling background of the game. After we've created the scrolling background, we're going to continue by building the bird and adding the flap or the jump. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to add the pipes to the game that move towards the bird. After that, we're also going to include the collisions. So whenever the bird collides with a pipe, the game is over. And finally, we're going to end off this video by adding a starting screen to the game. Before we jump in, I want to mention that all the timestamps are going to be in the description. And in addition to that, you'll also find a link to the code in the description down below. If this video does help you out, then make sure to leave a like on this video to let me know, and I'll make more of these videos in the future. And now let's jump in. Right here I have PyCharm open, and we're going to create a new project. We're going to call our project Flappy, and we're going to make sure that when we create a new project, we have the new environment checked because we want a virtual environment in our project. In addition to that, we do want to take the check mark out of this final box down here because we don't need a welcome script. Then we're going to press on create. Once our new project opens, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the folder with the assets and drag it into our project. Now this folder simply contains the images that we need to build the game. So if we have a look through this folder, you can see that I have a background image. I have images of our bird flying. I have a game over image. I have an image of the ground. Then I have the pipe bottom, the pipe top image, and a starting image, which we're going to use at the beginning of the game. The next thing we need to make sure is that we have the necessary modules installed. So let's go down to the terminal and type out pip install pygame. And you'll see that we get pygame installed in our virtual environment. As you can see here, it says successfully installed. And if you want to make sure that it really is successfully installed, you can type in pip list and this command will list out all the individual modules that are currently installed. And as you can see, Pygame is one of them. The convenient thing about Pygame is that it has a lot of really helpful functions inside of it that we can use to build games. So that's why we're using it. The final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a Python file called main.py into my project. After dragging it in, let me open it up you can see that there are just a couple of lines of code there, so nothing special. And these lines of code are going to be the basis for building the project. You can think of this code that I have up in the editor as the skeleton of our game. Pretty much any game programmed with Python and Pygame has some elements that you see here in it. Before we talk about the details of this code, let us briefly execute it and see what happens. So when I go ahead and run this, you can see all I get is a black window. And pay attention to this, when I press on this red X at the top right hand corner, I can close the window. Absolutely amazing. So the window that just opened up a moment ago is the result of the code that we have in the editor at the moment. You can see that at the very top, I'm importing Pygame, I'm also importing exit from the module system. Then I'm initializing Pygame, I'm setting the Pygame clock, which allows us to control the frame rate of the game. Below that, I'm creating the window, which was pretty much the black box you saw. So I'm giving it a window height, I'm giving it a width, and then creating the window. Then after that, I have one function in here, which is the quit game function. And this function allows us to quit the game by pressing the red X icon as I did earlier. And below that, I have the main method, which has the main loop within it. And the main loop 
is pretty empty at the moment. It has, well, a couple of elements. At the very top, I'm calling the quit game function, which allows us to, well, press the red X and close the window. Then I have a reset frame section where we are filling the window with the color black. So the 0, 0, 0 you see here are simply RGB values. And these values at the moment are, well, black. Then I have the clock tick, and within this, I pass in the argument 60. Now this limits the frames per second to 60. At the very end of the while loop, I have a display update, and then at the very end, I'm simply calling the main method. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we load in all the necessary images that we need to build the game. So that is exactly what this code block right here, which I've just pasted in does. So now we have this very nice list of images that we can reference and that we can then display on our window. So let's go ahead and do that with our very first image, which is going to be the background image. We're going to go down into our main loop and I'm going to write a comment, which is going to be draw background. And below that, I'm going to write window.blit and the blit method simply takes two arguments. It takes first the image we want to display, which over here is going to be skyline underscore image. And the second argument is the position where on the window we want to blit, or in other words, output the image. And that's going to be the coordinates zero, zero. So if we go ahead and press run, you can see that now we have this beautiful background in our canvas window. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding the ground to the game. The special thing about the ground is that it moves. So this is going to be a little bit more challenging than simply adding an image. Just below where we listed the images, we're going to add another comment and write game variables. And the first variable we're going to add is going to be the scroll speed and we're going to set it to one. This variable is going to set how fast the game runs. So the higher the number here, the faster the objects coming from the right hand side of the screen are going to be passing to the left. So in other words, the faster um, the ground is going to be moving. Below this first variable, we're going to be creating our very first class. This class is going to be called ground and it is going to inherit from pygame.sprite.sprite. When you write this out, make sure that this first sprite does not start with a capital letter, but the second sprite does start with a capital letter. Then we're going to create an init function, and this init function is going to take two arguments, x and y, which is going to be the coordinates of the ground piece which we're moving. Within this init function, the first thing we want to do is we want to initialize the base class, and we can do this by writing pygame.sprite.sprite.init. Then we're going to specify the image of the ground. So we're going to set self.image equal to the ground image. And since we will need to manipulate the position of the ground element, we will use pygame rectangles. So we're going to set self.rect equal self.image.getrect. And we're going to set the x and y coordinates of this rectangle equal to the x and y coordinates which we've passed in as arguments. The pygame rectangle objects are really, really convenient, especially when it comes to checking for collisions, which we'll need later on, because it allows us to simply use methods where we can check for the over overlapping of the rectangle areas. Now that we're done with the init function, we're also going to add an update function. This function is going to be responsible for moving our ground elements from the right hand side of the screen to the left. So I'm going to add the comment move ground and below that we're going to set self.rec.x and we're going to subtract the scroll speed which we created earlier from the x position of the rectangle. In addition to that, we want to make sure that whenever one of these ground objects moves off of our screen, we want to delete it because we're not using it anymore. If it's off screen, you don't see it. So we're going to write if the X position of the rectangle is smaller than or equal to the negative window width, we're going to self.kill the object. 
Now we're going to go down to the main function and in here I'm going to add another comment just to make sure that we have good structured code and we're going to over here um, initialize the initial ground element at the very beginning of the game. So we're going to set an x position ground, a y position ground, which are going to be the x and y coordinates respectively, and we're going to set them to 0 and 520. Next, we're going to create a sprite group. So we're going to set the variable ground equal to pygame.sprite.group. And to this sprite group, I'm going to be adding one ground object. And this ground object is in fact the very first one that we see appear on the screen when we start the game. I'm going to create a new section within our main loop and this section is going to have a comment header which is going to be draw. And this is going to be the section where we're going to be calling the draw function on the pipes, the ground and the bird. But we'll get to that. So the first thing we're going to draw is the ground. So we're going to call ground.draw and we're going to pass in the window as a argument. Now it's not enough to simply draw the ground. We also need to update it because of course we want to move it to the left hand side. So underneath we're going to create another comment with the header update and this is going to be responsible for updating the pipes, the ground and the bird. So we're going to add the ground.update beneath that. So if I run it at this stage, you will see that the ground object, which I have just created, is moving off of the screen to the left really nicely. But at the same time, no new ground objects are spawning on the right hand side. We would expect that to happen. So let's go ahead and do that. In the main loop, I'm adding another comment called spawn ground. And underneath, we're going to say that if the length of the ground list is smaller than or equal to two, then we're going to add another ground object to the ground group. And what you will be able to see now is that the ground is going to move continuously to the left and we always get new ground elements spawning seamlessly. So it looks like this ground is infinite, even though we're just moving individual objects to the left hand side, deleting them and adding new ones to the right hand side. Now that we've created the moving ground, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create the bird for our game. So in the next step, our game should look something like this. We should have this bird and it should be able to flap and jump around. We're going to build the bird in three components. The first component is the animation of the bird. Yeah, we want to see it flap its wings, so that's what we're going to do first. The second thing we want to do is we want to add the flap, so the jump you can call it. The third thing that we want to do is we want to have the bird turn in that direction that it is moving in. So these three components are what we're going to be focusing on next. So let's talk about the animation. As you can see here, we have three images of the bird and each of these images shows the bird with a different wing position. All we need to do in order to animate the bird is show these individual images sequentially. Since these three images are stored within the bird underscore images variable, all we need to do is loop through the array. To loop through this array, all we need is a number which increases and then resets again. So we're going to introduce the variable called image index and we're going to be incrementing it every time the update function is called for the bird. Since the update function runs really quickly, we're not going to be changing the bird image on every increment of one. Instead, we're going to be changing the image of the bird every 10 increments of the index. So when the image index is between zero and nine, we're going to be showing the first image with index zero. When the index is between 10 and 19, we're going to be showing the second image with the index one. And when the index is between 20 and 29, we're going to be showing the third image with the index two. And as soon as we reach a value of 30, we need to make sure that we reset the image index back to zero. And this process is going to go on and on and it will help us animate the bird. One question which you might ask yourself is how can we have 30 indices, but at the same time only have three images? How do we map the 30 onto the three? And this is quite a simple problem to solve because all we need to do is we need to floor divide the image index by 10. 
Floor division is a very simple operation. All it does is divide two values by one another and then round down. So if we take the values 0 to 9 as an example, if we floor divide any value between 0 and 9 by 10, we get 0. Similarly, if we floor divide any value between 10 and 19 by 10, then we get the value 1. So back in the editor, we're going to make a couple of changes to our code. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another game variable. And this is going to be called the bird start position. And it's going to contain the x and y coordinates of the starting position of our bird. Then we're going to create a new class called bird. And it is going to inherit from pygame.sprite.sprite. The very first function in this class is going to be the init function. And the first thing we're going to do within this init function is we're going to initialize the superclass. After that, we're also going to set self.image equal to the very first bird image in the bird images array. And because we love working with pi game rectangles, we're going to set self.rect equal to self.image.getRectangle. Once we've created this rectangle, we're going to set self.rectangle.center, so the center of this rectangle, equal to the bird start position that we made just a moment ago. Then we're going to create the image index, which we talked about earlier. So remember, this is going to be the number which loops through the bird images and animates our bird. So now that we've completed the init function, next up is the update function. Within the update function, I'm going to add a comment, animate bird, because the code underneath is going to be responsible for animating the bird. First up, we're going to be incrementing the image index by one every time the update function is called. And as we've already discussed before, we're going to be resetting the image index every time it reaches a value of 30. So when it reaches 30, we're going to be resetting it to the value of 0. Then we're going to set the image and we're going to pass in the image index floor divided by 10 into the array. There are just a few more things that remain to be done before we can see an animated bird on our screen. First off, we're going to go to the main function and we're going to instantiate the bird. So let's create a variable called bird and set it equal to pygame.sprite.groupsingle. And to this group single, we're going to add an instance of the class bird by writing bird.add, and in brackets, we're going to write bird. So what we've done here is we've created an instance of the class bird and added it to the group single. Finally, we need to make sure that we call the draw function on the bird, as well as the update function on the bird. And once we've done both of those things, we can go ahead and run, and you'll see that we have the bird on our screen and it's animated. Moving forward quickly, we're now going to talk about the jump of the bird, or what I like to call the flap of the bird. Before we confuse ourselves by looking at the code, let's try and understand the concept behind this jump first. And for this purpose, I have drawn up an image over here in my paint canvas. You can see on the vertical axis, we have the Y coordinate, and on the horizontal axis, we have the X coordinate. Now remember that in Pygame, the top leftmost pixel of the canvas is the point zero zero. The value of y increases the further we go down, and the value of x increases the further we move to the right. The y coordinate of the bird is what we're going to be interested in, because that is exactly what moves the bird up and down at the screen. More specifically, we're going to be adding a variable called velocity to the y coordinate of the bird. So let's imagine that we press the spacebar. Every time we press the spacebar, we want to have the bird jump, or in other words, flap. Whenever that happens, we're going to be setting the velocity equal to minus 7. And now, when we add this negative velocity value to the y coordinate of our bird, it is going to be moving up the screen. But at the same time, when it moves up the screen, we want it to decelerate. We want this movement to become slower and slower so that the bird comes down again due to the pull of gravity. In order to do that, we're simply going to be adding 0.5 to the velocity value on every while loop iteration. So on the eighth update of the while loop, when we've added 0.58 times, we're going to be at a velocity of minus 3. Then, after 14 loops, we're going to have added the value of 0.5 14 times to our initial velocity of minus 7, so we're going to have a velocity of 0. Now, if we continue adding 0.5 beyond this point, 
the velocity is going to turn positive, and we're going to be adding positive values to our y-coordinate of the bird. This is going to make the bird move down on our screen. And then if we continue on like this, after 28 iterations of the while loop, when we've added 0.5 28 times to the initial value of minus 7, we end up with the starting velocity of 7 again. But this time the sign is positive, which means it's moving us downwards. So that means when our bird moves up the screen, the value of the velocity the vel value over here is going to be decreasing. And at the very tippity top of the jump, the velocity value is going to have a value of zero. But we're going to continue adding the value of 0.5 to the velocity value, and that means the velocity values become positive again. And we're adding positive values to the y coordinate of the bird, which means it's going to start moving down again. So in summary, if we have velocity values between minus 7 and 0, we are adding negative numbers to the y-coordinate of the bird, which makes it move up. And similarly, when we have velocity values between 0 and 7, we're adding positive values to the y-coordinates of the bird, and that makes the bird move downwards. So back in the editor, the first change we're going to make is we're going to add the velocity variable and the flap variable to the init function in the bird class. The velocity variable is the one that we talked about just a moment ago. And the flap variable, on the other hand, is going to help us prevent the player from spamming the jump button. Further below in the update function, we're going to add the user input as an argument. Because over here we want to check for whenever the user presses the spacebar, which is when we execute the flap, or in other words, the jump. Then under the comment gravity and flap, we're going to be incrementing the value of self.velocity by 0.5 every time the update function is called. And remember, this update function is called on every iteration of the main loop. In addition, we don't want the bird to move down our screen faster than 7 pixels every while loop iteration. So we're going to say that if the self.velocity is greater than 7, we're going to set the self.velocity equal to exactly 7. We also want to prevent the bird from falling below the ground level. So we're going to write that if the y coordinate is lower than 500, then only in that case do we add the velocity to the y coordinate of the bird. Next, we're going to add another if statement, which is going to state that if self.velocity is equal to zero, then we're going to set self.flap equal to false. Now remember from earlier that self.velocity is equal to zero at the climax, or the highest point of the jump. So by adding this if statement, we can make sure that the user cannot execute another flap or another jump before the highest point of the bird is reached. Now let's take care of the user input. We want to execute a jump whenever the user presses the spacebar. But at the same time, there are a couple of prerequisites that need to be met for the user to be able to execute this jump. So it's not enough to press the spacebar. The flap variable also has to be false. And in addition to that, we also want the Y position of the bird to be below the top of the window. So if these prerequisites are met and we press the spacebar, we want to turn the variable self.flap to true, and we want to set the self.velocity variable equal to minus 7. There are two final things that remain to be done for our bird to have the jumping mechanic. First, within the main loop, we're going to be adding another variable, and we're going to assign it the value of the user input. And second, we're going to call the update function on the bird, and within this update function, we pass in the user input, which we just created. So now, when I run this, you can see that our bird has the flapping mechanic. It can jump up and down. The last thing that we want to happen is for the bird to look up when it's going up and to look down when it is moving downwards. All we need to do in order to accomplish this is add this transform function to the image. And now you'll be able to see that the bird faces upward when it flies up and downward when it flies down. So the bird works perfectly fine now, we're finished with this part, so we're going to be moving on to the third part of this video, where we're going to be adding the pipes to the game that move towards the bird. So let's move on and create these pipes. The first change we're going to make is we're going to import the module random, which is going to become helpful later on. Next, we're going to create a new class called pipe, which is going to inherit from Pygame, Sprite, 
that sprite. The first function in this new class is going to be the init function, which takes the arguments x and y, which are the coordinates of the pipe. And in addition to that, it is also going to take an image. Below that, we're going to initialize the parent class. Then we're going to set self.image equal to the image we're passing in as an argument. Then in order to be able to set the position of the image on our screen, we're going to set self.rectangle equal to self.image.getRect. And subsequently, we can set the x and y position of the rectangle equal to the x and y coordinates that we're passing in as an argument. Next up, we're going to create an update function, which is going to be responsible for moving the pipes from the right hand side of the screen to the left. In order to do that, all we need to do is subtract the scrolling speed from the X position of the image. In addition, we can also delete the image of the pipe as soon as it moves off of the screen. We can accomplish this with an if statement, which states that if the x position of the rectangle is smaller than or equal to the negative value of the window width, then we simply kill the object. Then further below in the main function, we're going to set up the pipes. First, we're going to set the pipe underscore timer variable to zero, and we're going to set pipes equal to pygame.sprite.group. And to this sprite group, we're going to be adding the pipe objects later on in the main loop. So further down below in the main loop, we're going to make sure that we call the draw function on the pipes so that they are displayed on the screen. Besides that, we also want to make sure to call the update function on the pipes. The last thing that we're going to be adding to the main loop is going to be the mechanism that spawns the individual pipes onto the screen. To begin, we're going to check if the pipe timer is smaller or equal to zero. The pipe timer is going to be responsible for setting the interval within which the pipes are being spawned onto the screen. If this condition is true, we're going to set the x top and x bottom variables equal to 550. Afterwards, we're going to set the y value of the top pipe to a random integer between minus 600 and minus 480. Since we want there to be a gap between the top and the bottom pipe, we're going to set the y coordinate of the bottom pipe equal to y top plus a random integer between 90 and 130 plus the bottom pipe image height. Once we've set the coordinates of the top and bottom pipes, all we need to do is we need to add these pipes to the pipes group. Once all of that is done, the last thing we need to do is we need to reset the pipe timer variable equal to a random integer between 180 and 250. Finally, we're going to make sure that we subtract one unit from the pipe timer every while loop iteration. So we're going to be subtracting from the pipe timer until it goes back to zero, which is when we spawn a new pair of pipes. So that's all we need to do to add the pipes. Now, if I go ahead and press the run button, you will see that the pipes, they start spawning on the right hand side of the screen and they move over towards the bird. Although the pipes move towards the bird, we still have not implemented the collision mechanic. So you can see here in the video footage that the bird is flying through the pipes. Therefore, we're going to move on to the fourth part of this video, which is going to be adding the collisions to the game so that whenever the bird collides with a pipe, it dies and we have to restart the game. And besides the collisions, we're also going to be adding a score to the game. Let me go ahead and start off by explaining how we're going to measure the score for our bird in the game. So let's say that this little blue circle over here is our bird. I'm going to give it the label bird. We're going to be measuring the score based on the position of the bird relative to the bottom pipes. So we're going to be taking the bottom pipes over here as our reference to calculate the score. We're going to be checking if the bird um, has passed the uh, left corner of the bottom pipe. So if it's gotten to this point and passed it, we're going to be setting the enter variable equal to true. Afterwards, when it has entered this um, section under the pipe, it's going to be between these two spots over here. And we're going to then make a check to see if the bird has passed the bottom right corner of the bottom pipe. So 
Once it has, it's going to be somewhere over here. And in that case, we're going to set the exit variable equal to true. And once both the enter and exit variables are equal to true, we're going to set the past variable equal to true. And once the past variable over here has been set to true, in this case, we want to add one to the score. And this process is going to continue for every pipe. So when the bird continues to move to the right hand side, we're again checking the bottom left corner to see if the X coordinate of the bird has passed the X coordinate of this bottom uh, left corner of the bottom pipe. Once it has, we set the variable enter to true. And then when it passes the rightmost point of the bottom pipe, we're setting the variable exit to true. And since we have enter and exit equal to true, we're going to move on to make past true. And in this case, again, we need to add one to the score because past is equal to true. So we're going to add one again. And this process is going to continue on and on for as long as the bird keeps moving to the right hand side. And so this is exactly the logic that we're going to be implementing. So let's jump right in. So now that we know how the scoring system is going to work in our game, let us go ahead and code it out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called score and set it to zero. Besides that, we're also going to create a font, which is the font we're going to use to display the score on our screen. Within the init method of our bird class, we're going to add a new variable called alive and set it to true. This is going to track whenever our bird dies. Whenever it dies, we're going to set it to false. And when the bird is alive, it's going to be set to true. Then further below in the update function, we're going to make a small change, which is that we only want to animate the bird and have it flap its wings whenever it is alive. So whenever it runs into a pipe, it dies and isn't animated anymore. So let's go ahead and add that in. In the user input, we also want to check whether or not the bird is alive or not, because we only want to track the user input whenever the bird is alive. Because if the bird dies by running into a pipe, we don't want the user to be able to input a jump anymore with the spacebar. Now we're going to get into the details of the scoring mechanic that I explained earlier. First off, over here in the pipe class, we're going to go within the init function and add the pipe type to the attributes that we input. After that, I'm going to introduce the three variables we talked about earlier. So the enter, the exit, and the past variables. And we're going to set all of them equal to false. And below that, we're going to set the pipe type of the object equal to the argument that we pass into the method. So now we're going to get to the interesting part, which is the score. First, we're going to reference the global variable score. Then we're going to add an if statement, which is going to check that we are in fact referring to a bottom pipe. Because remember, we're checking the score relative to the bottom pipes and not the top ones. So once we've checked that we are in fact looking at a bottom pipe, we are first going to check if the bird's X position is greater than the top leftmost corner of the bottom pipe, in which case we can set the enter variable to true. Afterwards, we're going to check if the bird's X position is greater than the top rightmost corner of the bottom pipe. And in that case, we want to set the exit variable to true. And finally, if both the enter and the exit variable have been set to true, then we want to set the past variable to true. Besides that, we also want to add one to the score. There are a few more minor changes that I want to make. First, in the main function, we're going to be adding the global score. Then further below, we want to make sure that the score is actually displayed on our screen. So we're going to have the score text and we're going to render it. And of course, we need to blit, or in other words, output it within our canvas. Another small change I want to make, which will become relevant later on when we add the collisions to the game, is that I only want to update the pipes and the ground whenever the bird is alive. 
Similarly, we're only going to spawn pipes whenever the bard is set to alive. And now the final change we want to make is we want to add the attribute top or bottom to the top and bottom pipes. Because remember, in the score function, we are checking explicitly whether or not we're looking at the bottom pipe. This helps us track the score. So at this stage, if we go ahead and run the game, you can see that the flappy bird is working completely fine. And whenever it passes a pair of pipes, the score increases by one, which is exactly what we want. Now, of course, there's still one thing missing, which is the collision mechanic. So of course we want the bird to die and fall to the ground whenever it hits a pipe. That's what we're going to do next. So having said that, we're going to create one variable which checks if there has been a collision between the pipes and the bird. And if there has been a collision, then this variable turns to true. Similarly, we're going to have another variable which is going to check if there has been a collision between the bird and the ground. And this is also going to be set to true whenever the bird hits the ground. If either one of these variables is set to true, then we want the bird to not be alive anymore. So we're going to set alive to false. In addition to that, we're also going to say that if the collision ground variable is set to true, then we want to output on our screen an image which says game over. Finally, we're going to allow the player to reset the game by saying that if the user input is the key R, which is short for reset, for example, then we set the score to zero, we run the main method, and we break out of the current loop. So at this stage, if we go ahead and run the game again, you'll see that we have a beautiful working Flappy Bird game. And whenever we run into one of the pipes, the bird dies. In addition to that, we have this beautiful scoring system, which also works. So we're nearly finished with the project. The last thing that remains to be done to sort of round off this project is to add a really nice starting screen and a menu screen to this game. In the current state of the game, when we crash against a pipe, you can see that we have the chance to reset the game by pressing the button R. So all that we want to add to this game is a starting screen from which we can start off the game. To begin, we're going to create a new variable called game underscore stopped, and we're going to set it to true. Then further below in the section where we handled the collisions of the bird, we're going to remove the function call to the main function right over here. This function call was initially responsible for resetting the game once we run into a pipe and press the R button. But instead of resetting the game immediately, we now want to go over a main menu. And the main menu is what we're going to take care of next. So further below, we're going to define a new function and call it menu. The first thing we're going to have within this function is the global game stopped variable, which we will need to refer to. Then we're going to have a while loop, which is going to be running as long as the game stop variable is set to true. Because of course, we only want the main menu screen or the starting screen to run whenever the game is stopped. And within this while loop, the first thing that we're going to do is call the quit game function. As we discussed in the very first episode of the series, this allows us to quit the game window whenever we press the red X icon in the top right hand corner of the window. After that, we're going to draw a couple of things on our screen. First, we're going to fill the screen with a color black. After that, we're drawing the skyline image, then comes the ground image, then comes a bird image, and finally we're going to add an image with the flappy bird start icon. Another thing we need to do here is we need to check for the user input because we want to start off the game whenever the player presses the space bar. So we're going to first create the variable user input and assign it with the value of the user input. And then we're going to say that if the user input is the space key, we're going to run the main function. And the last thing that we need to add to this menu function is an update of the display. And at the very end, we need to call the main function. So now when I run the game, I'm greeted by this really nice starting screen. 
and I can go ahead and press space to start off the game. As soon as I now run into one of these pipes, you'll see that the game is over. And as when I press R, I can reset the game. And I'm greeted by the same menu screen that we saw at the beginning, where I can press start again to play another round of the game. So this marks the end of our journey of creating the game. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then consider giving this video a like. It helps out the channel a lot. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.